physicsinfo.co.uk Another in the series of Physics GCSE tutorials. Topic 13, Electromagnetic Induction. This is the separate science content. Generating a current. If a magnet moves relative to a conductor, it will generate a current. Similarly, if a coil of wire moves or spins in a magnetic field, a current will be generated. The direction of this current, whether AC or DC, will depend upon the commutator. So, looking at the magnet moving in the coil, as the field lines, the magnetic field lines, cut through the coil of wire, a current is generated. The faster the magnet moves, the greater the current induced. If there are fewer turns, you will get a smaller current. So, looking at the field lines, you can see that it's only when the magnet or the coil is moving that the lines are cut and electricity is generated. Here, the magnetic poles are constantly being reversed and the electrons are being driven backwards and forwards. This would be an alternating, an AC current. If poles reverse more rapidly, the greater the frequency of the AC. This water wheel demonstrates how a simple generator might work. This would be a hydroelectric plant, perhaps. The faster the wheel turns, the greater the amount of current generated. In conclusion, the induced potential difference can be increased by a number of factors. Moving the magnet faster, more turns of wire, and a stronger magnet. However, the induced current itself generates its own magnetic field, and this magnetic field opposes the original one. I'm going to demonstrate this using a plate of aluminium that is set up to swing within a magnetic field. You'll notice that the plate has slits cut into it. Aluminium, of course, is a conductor, but it's not magnetic. Now to repeat the experiment, but with a solid sheet of aluminium. Without the slits to stop electron flow, a current builds up and the opposing magnetic field is generated. This is the principle of electromagnetic breaking. The aluminium disc spinning in a magnetic field generates a current. This generated current produces a magnetic field which slows down the disc. A similar effect can be seen using an electromagnet or a transformer to generate the magnetic field and making little metal rings jump. If the ring is continuous, there will be an opposing magnetic field. But if there's a single slit in the ring, the ring no longer jumps in the air. This one is a solid ring. Whereas this one has a single slit in it. And this forms the basic idea of magnetic levitation, or maglev.
trains capable of speeds around five or 600 kilometers per hour could encompass the globe and help to reduce the effects of air travel on global warming. There are two key types of generator, alternators that produce alternating current and dynamos that generate direct current. Well before that a magnet turning in a coil of wire or a coil of wire turning in a magnet can produce electricity. In this case, the electrons alternate in direction, producing an alternating current, and this is produced by an alternator. Alternators connect via two slip rings. If on the other hand you have a split ring commutator, then the current will always go in one direction. This will be DC and a dynamo. The current produced will fluctuate up and down, but it will always be positive and always flow in one direction. If you have more than one coil of wire, you can even out this variation. This same idea of induced current is what is used in a microphone or a loudspeaker. In the microphone, sound pressure variations cause a diaphragm attached to a coil of wire to vibrate relative to a magnet. These movements are turned into an alternating signal. That signal is picked up by an amplifier and fed to a loudspeaker. In the loudspeaker, the alternating signal from the amplifier passes through a coil which causes it to move relative to a fixed magnet. This movement causes a speaker cone attached to the coil to vibrate, and that's what you hear. Transformers only work with alternating current. An alternating potential difference drives an alternating current in one circuit, and this can result in an alternating current and hence an alternating potential difference in a second circuit. Transformers do not work with direct current. With an alternating current, there is an alternating magnetic field, and this alternating magnetic field drives electrons backwards and forwards in a second coil. Transformers change the size of an alternating voltage in the ratio of the number of turns. The primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage is equal to the number of turns in the primary divided by the number of turns in the secondary. You may well have to rearrange this and carry out calculations. This is a transformer in a local substation. Transformers are by no means 100% efficient, but all the questions you'll be asked will assume that they are. Basically, they will assume that the power into the primary will equal the power out at the secondary. Amps times volts in equals amps times volts out. And again, you may well have to rearrange and calculate. This is just an example showing that though the voltage pretty much increases in the ratio of the number of turns, the efficiency is very poor. Transformers are an essential part of the national grid where pylons carry electricity all around the country. The national grid distributes electrical energy all around the country. Supply and use can be separated by many miles. Electrical energy is distributed at very high voltages and, because P equals IV, this means the current is kept relatively low. Current flowing in cables causes them to heat up and this is the main source of line loss. Power is amps times volts and V equals IR, therefore power is amps times amps times resistance. In other words, P equals I squared R. So three times the current results in nine times the power loss. Current in the grid is AC, alternating, and step-up transformers are used to increase the voltage. Locally, the voltage is again reduced to levels that are safe using step-down transformers. A quick picture showing how step-up and step-down transformers are used. In conclusion, 
Power loss is proportional to the square of the current flowing. Voltages are increased by step-up transformers and reduced by step-down transformers. High voltages, and hence low currents, result in increased efficiency. And that's it. Thank you for watching.